long loads and bullshit, expect technical issues. We're having a lot of them from headphones to internet connections to cameras. Everything's going wrong today. It's a Murphy's Law episode, but you're here, we're here. And along with my co-host, Uncle Dig, we're going to talk to you about some terpenes and some cannabinoids today. Please say hello, Uncle Dig. I'm sorry to steal the intro. Hello, I'm Uncle Dig, your friendly neighborhood gardener. Although probably not in your neighborhood, depending on where you are in the world. I'm based in Oregon. Evan is based in Oklahoma, two medical legal states in the fine United sort of states of America. The increasingly divided United States, but that's cool. We are definitely- United States of whatever! United States of whatever. We're here, and we're here for an educational episode. We haven't done I Know Your Terps in a while. I dug into some Terps. Dig has some great info on cannabinoids. But first, as with every episode, we always start off with what Dig is smoking. Uncle Dig, what are you smoking this week? I am smoking uh, some homegrown amnesia haze. Last mm-hmm. week, I was smoking Amnesia Haze 1, which was the pl- the first plant I grew. I grew two okay. plants. Today, I'm going to be smoking the second plant that I call Amnesia Haze 2 because it is a little more sedate and a little less spacey. So it should mm-hmm. ground us a little more on topic for the show. Dig is smoking stuff that he grew. Um, out of his garden. And if you listen to his show, The Bagseed Chronicles, which is available on Audible and all the other podcast platforms you would look on it, um, you, can, you, can, you can hear like progress on these plants and there's like big drama and shit. And I don't even want to spoil it. If you listen to the show, you know what I'm talking about. But like, there's a lot of shit on there, plus interviews, plus a lot of stuff. So check out The Bagseed Chronicles. And while we're begging, one other thing, come on and check out the socials. Check out the Insta, which is Bongloads and BS. Um, if you want my personal Insta, it's kind of lame. It's Bongloads and BS7. Uncle Dig's at Uncle Dig. And uh, most of all, subscribe to us wherever you're listening it helps us out and blah 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 blah. we're talking about making some stickers and shirts and shit when fun gets right funds get right if you're into that give us a shout let us know and we'll get you in early and get you the cheap shit and if you uh, really that, wanted to get kinky daddies you could review us on itunes oh yeah yeah there's a gentleman named totally not the host that gave us a very kind five-star review on itunes just last week <laughs> which you know weird how that happens and I, I I hear that his name was uh, totally not the host because not the host was taken, but I don't know how true that is. Let's move into the garden updates. Now, your garden, of course, has had that drama over the last several weeks, and I don't want to reintroduce your trauma or anything, so we don't oh, have to go fine. deep into that. But how's your garden going, man? Oh, um, it's going pretty good. Um, So outdoors, we've still got the two Fire of Maroofs roofs going. Um, okay. I did lose a fair amount to mites. But it looks like I'm going to be able to get the tops. Um, I may have to do a little bit more defoliation. I may have to cut off some more flower that died. But we had mm-hmm. a lot of rain and it got colder. So it seems like that slowed the mites down pretty significantly along with some spraying on my part. And so okay. I'm, I'm still going to get some sort of harvest off of them. It's not going to be very prodigious. Um, mm-hmm. I did pull in the uh, CBD plants since we talked. And I know how much okay. I, har- I, I harvested off of those. That's pretty cool. That's good shit, man. So if you and, right. and so I'll be dropping another episode of the Bag Seed Chronicles this week, um, sometime like from today soon, right? Um, and uh, as the listener hears it, not as we're talking, and right. um, there there will be yields for each of the CBD plants on there. I will say Ooh. I got more of each of them. I would actually be really interested to hear that. I might cut what you just said out because I was immediately like, holy shit, I want to know. So that I might. Okay. Yeah. Bleep it out. Like okay. be like, I got, and then bleep mm. out of each of them. And then like, that'd be fun. Listen to the bag seed chronicles. Fucking do it bitches. And I'll tell you right, secrets. I... There's no secrets. I'll tell you everything I know. My, my garage garden, as you could call it, my, my single plant, we decided to go per your recommendation because we, the canopy would be fucked up. We're just letting that girl grow and let her take up the tent and whatever. Just use it as a learning run. Yeah. Um, as far as straight upgrades go, got some really, really good news this morning. There oh, was yeah. a couple day period where it got cold in the evenings out there. And like, it just may be a little colder than I would have liked. And I do have a question about that in a minute. Uh-huh. And like, she might've gone a day longer without watering than we thought. Cause we just, we wanted to wait and not fuck with her too much after we repotted her and just give her just enough. But today I went and checked on her this morning. And even though it was again, fairly nippy last night out here, she's green, way greener than she was. Cause she had some yellow leaves and shit. Yeah. She's grown. She's shown leaves and she's really vibrant. She's fucking really taken to the seven gallon pot. Okay. How cold did it get in your garage? Um, I need to pay attention to the night temperatures. I know at one point I woke up at like three in the morning and it was like 65 degrees. So not terrible yet, but it's oh, that's fine. getting colder. So, um, how are you going to heat your garage this winter while you're growing? 
Well, uh, we got a few things. One, we have some, you know, those moving mats they give you at the moving company. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We we acquired a number of those. Um, so we've got actually the tent sitting on top of a, a few of those. Good, which really good. helps because that concrete floor. Yep. Um, we've also got we've got a heater that it doesn't feel super safe to me. It's just a little space heater that on yeah. really bad nights we'll put in there with it and kind of run it off to the side. And we're yeah. looking into other solutions in the absolute worst case. when we don't want to have to do this because these Oklahoma winters can get shitty. We ran into this last time and it really hurt our plants growth. We might end up moving that bitch in here and just venting her right out that window beside you for the last of the run. It's just yeah. going to depend. So you, I, we get pretty cold here in Oregon too. Um, right. Not maybe not as cold as Oklahoma, if I'm being honest. And I, the first time I grew inside, I ran a space heater, okay. um, the whole time <laughs> in my garage. Okay, and it it got expensive, bro. Safety. What do you mean safety? It was plugged into the just, wall. Oh, just those space heaters are unsafe. They give me total dad like ah, you're oh, gonna set yeah. yourself on fire just running right. un, unobserved. Sorry. Right, right. I I don't. I, it causes me a little of anxiety. But then I figured out, okay. I can't be heating up my whole fucking garage. It's wasteful. Oh, so, I, I, yeah, sorry. So I thought, let me get a tiny space heater, like the smallest space heater I can find. Mm. And I'm going to put it in the tent. And I found a space heater on Amazon. That's mm. the size, like a little bit bigger than my fist. Oh, wow. It's like, it, it's probably like, I'm, I'm going to say it's probably four by four. And okay. it's got a little safety switch on the bottom, so if I knock it over, it shuts off. Right. I put it on a brick in my tent mm-hmm. so that it wouldn't get water on it because I don't want a wet space heater. Right. And then I plugged it into a, a a thermostat I bought on Amazon, and that's how I mm-hmm. ran it. And that worked. Didn't make me feel super good, but the thermostat made me feel better. Because one of the things about space heaters is how they get you is they'll it'll be a hot day and they'll be like I'm a retarded space heater and my thermostat's on the fridge so I'm just gonna I'm just, just gonna run just run on like a sixty degree day when it doesn't need to and then it burns itself out so that thermostat if it, it only if my only if the probe in the tent hmm. gets to like well I think I set it at like sixty one degrees or something it'll switch on right. but beyond that no. You don't get any heat. You can go down to 60 degrees, bitch. But like, or or maybe I'll set it to 70, whatever the temperature is. And that way my plants don't get super cold. But the great thing is the light was doing a lot of the work um, uh, early on because it was so close to the plants because it was low high heat, low, right. it was low intensity. But yeah, um, I used a space heater, but I used a really small one. And there's probably right. better solutions if you're willing to spend. I, I know. I I'm know willing that, but not able. Right, that's the thing, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, fi- uh, other people use swamp heaters. Um, some people well, uh, just wire their garages with it, their central air into their garages. Yeah. But I know you don't own, so you can't do that. Yeah. Um, if you did own your place, what I would tell you is, Evan, are you going to grow forever? And you'd be like, Yes, I'm going to grow forever. I'm like, Well, then you should put walls in your garage and insulation, and then run a Three vent points. out there. Three points. First, I've only this popped in my head. I've only got the first two syllables of homeowner, but I'm uh, second space heater wise. And this is my actual question. I wouldn't interrupt before we got too far along. Um, The space heater I have and I will probably I didn't realize that's actually an awesome suggestion. So thank you. But the space heater I have and I will probably end up having to resort to using if I don't resolve the situation is made to heat like a small sized room. Yeah. Um, You want to go deep into the lore. I, I bought this shit with some money that I hustled because uh, I didn't pay the gas bill when I was a tweaker and we needed something to heat the room. Um, but I still got it. I managed to keep onto it without pawning it or anything. It's it's about, I don't know, yay tall. Maybe it goes up to about your waist and it's a quartz heater. And what we oh, did God. was on, ex- on exceptionally cold nights, we would just pop that bitch in the tent and leave the door open on the tent a little bit. How tall what was it? What was the, oh God, the quartz heater? Like, like yay tall? Oh, it's like one of those long, narrow looking ones, right? Yeah. No, and it's not narrow. I'll just go get that bitch. Hold on. Yeah, fucking show me that shit. Oh, that's yeah. So that would heat my whole garage. I wouldn't put that in a tent. That that but makes I could, me feel unsafe. It doesn't radiate a ton of heat because it's got that quartz thing. But yeah, you're absolutely right. It probably isn't safe. And here's a little bit of lore since we've been getting into my old drug habits, and I got a decent camera on this. 
Do you happen to see this smudgy shit? Sorry, you taking a hit. I'm asking if you're listening on the podcast, you can see on the YouTube channel, me holding up a space heater, which is why you should come listen. Oh, yeah, I see that closer. weird shit on the screen. The yeah. orange shit all over it. Okay, so that is where... This is why you don't do amphetamines, folks. I would sit here with this thing sitting right beside me, playing World of Warcraft this close, just baking my leg. And that's like shit off my pants where my pants would touch it from time to time. I would sit there for days with this thing running on me, just turning my leg red, dude. That's getting me choked up thinking about it. Sorry. Well, that sounds that sounds not fun. Yeah, dude, it was hell. I'm just kind of I just had a real kick in the head memory. I hadn't even thought about that. See, anyway, only do drugs that make your life better, kids. Don't if, do math. Th- that's what I said. What did I say? <laughs> I've never met anyone that like, you know what made my life better? <laughs> Methamphetamine. I was I was down in the dumps. I was depressed. I didn't have any money. I wasn't very physically fit. And you know what fixed everything? Medical meth. No one says that. No one it, ever well, says that. <laughs> they say it for about two weeks. Well, yeah. Then it's not fun anymore. Yeah, and by then you can't stop. Add one more garden question for you, and then we'll go into the turf thing. Um, and I only do this. I've been trying not to hammer you with questions. I research before I ask shit. I'm getting a ton of conflicting information online. I have read that that plant should not get below 50. I have heard that it can't take a sustained period, but it can take a cold snap of like 28. I want to know what you think. Uh, yes. No. Uh, so, um, it can go down to fifty at night, no problem. Okay. If that's what you're doing every, like, if you do that gradually and that's every night, it goes down to fifty. I mean, because outdoor plants do that, right? My plants right. went down to forty-eight last night. They're fine. They're green. They're beautiful. They're happy. It's gonna be ninety today. They'll be great. Right. Um. But what you don't, but they're used to that. This has been their whole life. Right. So like it happened gradually as summer turned into fall where this happened. Um, They can go down. I've had plants go down to 38 degrees. Okay. Um, And they were okay, but I was worried. Now what is the, sorry, 30 freezing is too cold. Listen, and is that going to just kill them, or is it going to cause? Um, it's going to cause tissue damage from okay. water on the surface of the leaf and like are in the tissue, like bursting from freezing. They're not. They're not cold weather plants. I would say forty degrees is just as a general rule, right? There are some super strains, right? There are some Afghans that can go down to twenty eight. And they're like, whatever, I'm 90% resin. Fuck your water. <laughs> it's fine, right? And then other plants like Thai, it'll get down to 37 and they'll be like, ah, and they'll just be dead because they're sativas. They're supposed right. to be live in equatorial regions. But as That's a general rule, from. no, don't let your plant go down to 28 degrees. Um, I suspected that was bad advice. But um, 40 is fine, but don't do it all the time. Um, yeah. And I would try to keep it ab- above above 50. 50 is a good rule of thumb. And all of this is yeah. rules of thumb, right? We all right. we all have met plants that exceeded all kinds of expectations, right? right. As a general rule, indoors, you should try to keep it above 50 degrees when the lights are off. When the lights are on, it, it should be warm. Okay, that's absolutely fair and makes sense. Thank you. A couple of things you said reassure me here. Uh, one is this plant was taken from a greenhouse environment, so it's been you know more or less outdoors this whole time. In fact, I think it might have been. No, there's definitely there's paneling over, but like an open greenhouse environment. And the other thing is it will be tempering itself up because the cold doesn't come all at once here, just like anywhere. So I'm hoping now that you say that maybe that combination of things, and it does seem pretty hardy. It survived, you know, the trauma of repotting and shit and has bounced back so great. It's like an emerald color. Like I'm oh. hoping that maybe the garage concern is not as big of a deal as I thought. I now, actually here's put a picture. What you need to know is that yeah. cannabis only grows at certain temperatures. Right. Uh, um. So it'll survive 50 degrees, but it won't. It won't grow. It'll just, it'll kind of go into the stasis. So a lot of, so 
general advice is to keep the grow room temperature in between 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Now, as I understand it, now it can be it can be varied on temperatures, but above a certain hot temperature, uh somewhere around above 85 degrees and i think it's different for every individual and where they're at in their life cycle but Mm -hmm. above like 85 they start to slow down their growth and i think it's below 68 degrees i Mm -hmm. think generally they start to slow down their growth or enter kind of a stasis vibe as well and now some 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 strains that can go down to 65 degrees and i think it can get as hot as like you know, 98 degrees for some of the really outdoor, but I don't think many plants are, are growing super fast in 122 degree temperatures, for example. Although I have seen some plants like that stuff, but not all of them. That makes me wonder. Uh, We had an exceptionally hot summer here in Oklahoma. I guess there's really a heat wave all over the summer for everybody to kind of, yeah, but we had like, it was there was a stretch where I would look at the the temperature and it would be like 114. It's still a dry 114, but like it would just 114 yeah. would not be uncommon. And yeah. I'm wondering how all these outdoor plants grown during that period, you know, handled that out here. Well, I don't know. I don't grow out there. They like they right. like it. They like days like that here because oh. it's it's only 114. You just got to keep water on them. And I grow plants that like being outside in general. I look right for outdoor lands that i'm growing outdoors so on the 114 days like they're not growing at 114 but it's already 80 degrees in at like eight in the morning so they're growing then and then they're growing all the way until it hits whatever 91 98 then they stop but they're still like pounding through water moving tons of nutrients through and then as soon as it comes back down into their peak range they just go again so like maybe they're not growing from like 3 p.m to like 7 p.m at the hottest part of the day but the sun's still out in the summer at seven, at like eight at night, and they're growing. Right. You know what I so mean? So it becomes like six of one, half dozen of the other. Yeah, I think so. And also, if you've already <laughs> that, yeah, been growing, if you put your plants in really early, they're going to grow a little bit more early on. So they'll have more stuff to build on when it comes summer anyway. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Uh, I'll try to come back to next episode with more info about how the growers handled that. I'll ask on OK Marijuana or something. So yeah. this show, we want to do again talk about – terps and if you listen to this show much you know a little bit about terps you know a little bit more about weed than me you know a little bit about terps you know that terps are the wonderful things that are kind of the foundation in the masonry of the high you get when you smoke weed the medical effect your terpenes depending on the terpenes you get in a strain i i increasingly do not necessarily buy into the indica versus sativa thing as far as effects go so much anymore but i do strongly believe that different quote unquote terp <laughs> profiles make for very different medicinal effects that is why even me and i've got due to my edible consumption and insane tolerance i can smoke one strain that will knock me on my ass and put me on the couch i will smoke another one that will have me writing with one hand and eating chips with another just fucking munchies non-stop and feeling very creative another one yet might make me think that everybody i know is mad at me and that oh that guy behind me is definitely an undercover cop fucking you know, hit the gas driver. Like, so, so I, I believe that Terps are the magic to go into that. And there's also the thing of cabinets, which <laughs> biggest thing is Sutan, and with that, I give the floor to Uncle Dig. Yes. So I will say what you say about this stuff is true, except for the caveat. I would say that the older, like, true Indicas and the older true Sativas, as far as anything, is truly one or the other. The effects were more predictable both in those strains and in the their offspring. So in the beginning, you know, let's say there was Hindu Kush and OG Kush and all these Kushes. They're all mildly sedating, broad-leafed, indica-shaped plants, right? Okay. Right. We can argue about that, but let's just for a minute pretend that's true and OG doesn't have sativa leaning phenotypes. But let's right. for the let's look at OG, let's actually let's just look at Afghan, the original Afghan. Right. Broad-leafed short bushy indica plant it does all of those things that you want a traditional indica plant to do same thing with tie the old tie it was right. long stringy took forever to flower blah 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 and the minute those two combined we got a 
a, a poly hybrid and then they started breeding. <clears throat> and so now lots of plants can demonstrate different traits. Okay. So it's kind of more of a crapshoot. And there are people that will tell you, people that are smarter than me about cannabis, they will tell you that we've hybridized cannabis to death. And then there mm -hmm. are other people that are equally as smart and know equally more about cannabis than me that will tell you that that's not really possible because of how cannabis has had isolated populations forever. I still think that argument is is being had scientifically. I think mm -hmm. a lot of what we know about cannabis right now is still relatively early days. No, that's, like I, th that's, I, th I think, oh, sorry. yeah, sorry. I think we're into still in the primitive days of cannabinoid science. <laughs> okay, cool. We'll be sure. Uh, that, I 100% I agree with you. Legalization is going to help with that. And especially I know states like Oklahoma, I can't preach the law at you right now, but I know that there are special provisions allowing research that are a lot more friendly than, you know, other states, especially non-legal ones. I do have an aside, and this is my plan to that new editing technique. We might save this for later in the show, but is is the tie strain to your knowledge the same thing that's applied to like the old tie stick technique well i mean yes but there's also a, a, a strain called tie stick oh okay i thought so the tie so stick was okay so so no i'll explain it to you so tie stick originally right was the way that people bundled cannabis from thailand to be shipped to the united states okay so it was literally just bud tied around a stick in a certain way and each stick had a certain amount on it and right. there's actually me and my buddy lucas barfield if you want to hear a different kind of cannabis show um mm -hmm. on the radio tacoma website uh and ktqa which is a community radio station there in tacoma on our show the cannabis corner we actually interviewed the author of who's a smuggler of the book uh return to uh road to zabuanga and it's okay. a book. It's a book about a cannabis smuggler back in the day. And he came on to talk about tie sticks a little bit. That's I would actually love to hear that because I've heard some of the stories and I've just heard high level shit on like Netflix documentaries about smuggling and shit. But how tie stick was super easy to smuggle and that made it for these vets with pilot licenses, like the perfect thing to smuggle back and make some dough yeah. right after Vietnam and shit. Like there's a whole very interesting story. That would be something I would actually. Oh, like to hear. a lot of seeds came back from Vietnam. Um, uh, in in the bags and stuff, and on planes and stuff, guys carried. And then another thing that you know <laughs> allegedly may have happened during the Afghan war is the United States got flooded with a bunch of genetics from Afghanistan too. Don't know how, you know, there were a mm. bunch of Americans in Afghanistan for a long time. Whatever they were doing, you know, <laughs> are, are famously very, uh, very fond to those drug proclivities. So I mean, you know. <laughs> putting two and well, five you know, together and, and honestly if i i wasn't as i wasn't very into cannabis when i was in the army um right. but if i had known then what i know now i probably would have tried to source some seeds while i was there i don't know how well it would have gone right. but um it would have been fun to try there could be in an alternate timeline a strain called digs pink pocket ah i like that pink pocket no i'm not a breeder though well, sorry, how you get it back. I guess you're not taking them into out, into or out of jail. They're not going to search you necessarily. Well, I remember when we went through customs, not on a big aside, but when we went through customs, um, they they searched our bags and our bodies right. pretty thoroughly on the way out of there. They had to throw away a tobacco pipe I had used for the whole deployment. Oh, dang. And it kind of sucked because I was I was I was I kind of always thought like. Not that I don't have kids, but if I ever did have kids or like younger relatives, maybe they'd like the pipe that I had in Afghanistan or something. I don't know. But like um, I had to throw that in my amnesty bin because they didn't want any like smoking accessories coming back from there. Understandably, because they probably thought some of them because, you know, it could have been whatever. I don't know. But yeah, I had to throw out that pipe. And there were some guys that couldn't keep certain trophies they'd taken and shit like that. Right. No, like uh... nothing, nothing creepy, but like, you know, hmm. some guys like maybe take a take like a like a an empty AK-47 casing from a firefight oh, they were in or shit like that. Like not all soldier trophies are gross, Seven right? Like finger necklace. Right, right. Some some soldier trophies are gross, right? But some of them are just like 
pieces of equipment or scraps of fabric. It's not as gross as it could be. You know what I mean? Like a flag, like a, a captured flag is not that gross, right? You're, I'm, I'm not talking about ears and shit, although that did happen. I just had this whole very vivid image in my head flash by of like a document with approved and unapproved like body parts. I, I fucking I'm in my weird headspace today. Um, now, cannabinoids. Uh, this is something that obviously just from this awesome bulleted list that you've contributed to the, the fucking outline. And thank you for that. Um, yeah. You know a little bit more about the actual cannabinoids than me, which I've been kind of ignorant. I'm going to dive into those eventually, but I'm still one of my terps. Uh, what, what would you have to say about these that are on the list here? Is there anything that like, you know, that I should know or anything good for the show? This list has has eight, eight, eight cannabinoids on it. So CBGA, THCA, CBDA, CBCA, CBGVA, THCVA, CBDVA, and CBCVA. Okay, I'm not gonna talk about some of these because I still don't have a great grasp on exactly what they do. They're only found in certain strains. But right. what I will talk about is. Is four terpenes. I'm sorry, not four terpenes. Four cannabinoids that I do know a little bit about, and I think give you a general like what to look for as far as the as the top four, right? And the top four okay. I would say are THC, okay, okay. THCA, okay. Um, CBD, and CBG, right? Okay, that makes so, sense. So. So CBG is the oh well, let's start with THC right the one that everyone knows right regular THC THC acid right THCA right, right? okay the big one T the big one right the one that makes you high we can prove it we have the science right so this is the main responsibility the main uh, cannabinoid responsible for the head change right. any motor function change you may feel. Some analgesic qualities, better sleep, et cetera, et cetera. I think everyone yeah, is well reversed in THC. Right. Um, now let's move on to the next big one, CBD. All right. I'm a big perp per not perpetrator, perpetrator, a uh, proponent. proponent. I'm a big proponent, a big perpetrator of CBD, a big proponent of CBD. I grow uh, strains in my gardens that produce it specifically. Um, uh, it works really well. Uh, large amounts of CBD with small <laughs> amounts of THC in tandem um, can do a really good job to fight inflammation. It's almost like the aspirin of the cannabis world. I, guys, I know that's imperfect, but I'm explaining this to people that may not have a great. So like if you smoke a CBD joint that's low in THC, mm. the 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 efficacy equ equivalent of that is like taking a morning uh, Advil or uh, – um, naproxen sodium, oh, which I think is the same thing, and or uh, right. aspirin or something. It's like it's like it's like it's it's getting everything moving. It helps you stretch a little bit better, and it helps you move better. But it doesn't. It has a head change, but it's not one I would consider inebriating. Right? It's kind of like a mm. almost like a I don't know. I I wouldn't compare it to a, 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 a FF uh, like one of the little SRIs. Um, mm. But it does have an anti-anxiety effect. It can help you relax a little bit, not to the extreme that THC can, but right. to a to a certain degree. There are these full spectrum gummies, and I won't name the brand that I only recently went full spectrum. And I used to take these gummies a lot when they were distillate, and they would hit me pretty right. Like I loved them. Mm -hmm. um, since they've gone full spectrum, and especially with they've they've got a high CBD content now, yeah. dude, those things spark my anxiety so bad. Oh, like, interesting. Anytime that like I'm on social media, like raging about money and shit, like you can guarantee that I've probably had a 10 of those gummies and that's involved. Like I've had to completely back away from them. Um, so, so yeah, that was my only interjection. Yeah. Sorry. So, so a lot of stuff could be going on there. Something that CBD can do, which a lot of people will argue with, but I think it's probably true is it can, um, limit the effect of THC. It can, okay. um, almost counteract it there's a there's a belief that if if you're too high you can smoke a a, a cbd primary joint like a like a two to one or a, a 20 to one like a really high cbd weed with a very I'm low listening. thc and it can actually bring you down a little bit from the thc high because the cbd kind of counteracts the thc high a little, a little bit which is why um we accidentally tried to breed cbd out of the plant um, because okay. growers were trying to grow plants that were very potent, 
you could okay. get high off very little flour so they could sell it for more and it would pack more punch for the consumer. Mm. To do that, they accidentally bred stronger and stronger strains. And the one of the ways they made them stronger is they accidentally bred all the CBD out of them. So that's okay. why for early on in legalization, I don't know, like Oklahoma was kind of late to the game, but early on in 2010s and like in the medical scene earlier than that, when CBD was first coming onto the scene in like the mm -hmm. mid 2000s, they went before I was even really involved. Um, growers were really having a hard time finding strains that would produce it. And there was a of kind of That's a kind of a gold rush, um, not a gold rush, a breeding rush, a research rush, uh, mm. a horticultural quest in the community to find strains that produce CBD. And this is where you got the first ones like uh, Charlotte's Web, uh, ACDC, Sue. Harley Sue, CBD therapy was one. All, a lot of those different plants. Um, and then. Sweet. And then you got into and now and now it's if you look and you're willing to pay, you can find <laughs> CBD uh, genetics on seed banks. And I've had a really good luck with 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 the ones I've grown so far. I've I grown. Think the, sorry, by far the 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 CBD strains are what you bring up, if not the most, then certainly they're in the top two whenever we talk about them on the show. So that that alone has had me intrigued in trying them. Right, right. So um, I, I will say that like you you. you to you have to smoke more to get an effect right. um it's um i mean and, and medically too you want to you want to have a you know a half gram or a gram of flour you want to have a bit um and and so that turns some people off some people want concentrates and stuff right um but i like it because i can grow it in my backyard right next to my cannabis plants and it is cannabis it's cannabis it's got thc in it um but it's not a lot you know like for instance, one of the cultivars I grew this year is a one to one. It probably produces ten percent THC and ten percent CBD. Um, okay. Another one I grew uh, produces four percent THC and eight percent CBD. Is that from the the seed bank, or do you get that tested? I don't get that tested. That's just from the seed bank, and I okay. I know I, sh I I know I shouldn't trust them, but I do because mm. the CBD strains get me a little high, but not. A lot of high, if that makes sense. So I can kind of tell from my head that they're right. not making me super high, but I can also tell from my body um, when I when I smoke them before I stretch. Like I've definitely grown some plants that didn't seem to have as much in them. Like it didn't help me stretch as much. Like I that I moved mm. away from. So like I definitely prefer a two to one or a one to one, where it has a, a little a lot of like it has an equal amount or half the amount of THC as it does CBD. I like THC. I've grown 20 to ones and they don't work as well for me. If they work great for you, that's fine. I've grown ACDC. Um, I've grown, um, I think I've grown not Harley Sue, but one of the Harley, like the, I think I grew a can of Sue cut one time. I can't Gosh. remember. Um, it was unremarkable <laughs> for, for my growing condition. And that's the other thing. You may bring a plant that you've always wanted to grow into your garden and it may perform very poorly. Um, and it may not be your fault. You just may have a, a space that that plant doesn't like. Like some plants don't like to be grown outdoors, for example. Right. And some plants um, don't 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 do well indoors. It seems like it it, uh, it, it, it it's rare in my experience to find one that well because I don't I don't gravitate toward those like difficult ones. The only one I ever saw I bought that was indoor only was Alien OG, and I tried to grow it outside and I didn't like it. But um. I generally don't buy strains that are outdoor only. I like flexibility. Yeah, that's fair. That's absolutely fair. Let's talk about CBG. CBG yeah. is, I call it, I want, like, I'm going to call it CBD's funky cousin. Okay. Okay. Because it's like CBD, but it'll make you a little sleepy, which I like. Right. It's very, like, CBD is like your, you know, like a nice comforting cup of tea. And then okay. CBG is like That's you poured a, a little. And then and then CBG is like if you poured a little like Jaeger in your tea. A little shot it, of like, whiskey. Yeah, yeah, some snops, whatever. And you're like, oh, oh, you know, it doesn't. But it's still a very mild head change. Right. And a lot of the strains that the hemp strains that they've been growing that are strong in CBG. <laughs> have kind of been 
a good way for hemp only states to get a little I wouldn't call it near beer. I'd call it double near beer of cannabis, right? right? It's it's does it's doing something. I've had and I've had some uh I had a blunt that was a CBG blunt that my buddy Lucas gave me. Mm. And I had it with a friend who gets drug tested at work. So we right. smoked that instead. And he enjoyed that immensely because it still did something. There was a head change, but it wasn't uh you could tell it wasn't getting him high. It was nice. It was it was like a nice, relaxing experience. And I highly recommend right. that if you're in a legal state and you want to experiment with cannabis, but you don't want to risk your freedom, you know, right. maybe CBG plant material CBN. might be something to look in cbn totally and that would also allow you to avoid the uh from what i understand and i'm this is secondhand knowledge for me but the rather harshly created uh like delta eight products and shit which kind of ook me out to tell you the truth just yeah based on i I've i heard. delta eight ooks me out i i i know <laughs> this is gonna sound controversial i don't see the difference between delta eight and spice it's That's a synthetic true. it's listen That's it's controversial i don't give a fuck they're spraying this shit on stuff that it's not. Listen, if you're like they're chemically deriving, and people get mad at me, and I don't care. They're they're chemically deriving, mind altering, a chemical from 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 hemp, right? And then they're putting it on plant material for you to smoke, right? How is that not spice? I know that it's I not mean, completely chemically derived, but it's the same shit. It's synthetically derived cannabinoids sprayed on bullshit. That's what from it is. That, from that end, yeah, I could definitely see that. From the other end, I would say, and I'm not saying like this from a think of the kid's perspective at all, but just from my perspective, if I were to walk into like my kid brother or my son's room and uh, – I would be way more upset to find spice than Delta eight just because I've seen what spice can do to people. It Fair can enough. fuck people up. Fair enough. I, but as far I, as a, a creation, yeah, that, sorry. It, it, as a, I, I just, I don't want the answer because a lot of people are coming to, to Delta eight and, and it's their answer to legalization. They're like, mm -hmm. Oh, I'm just going to do this. And then I don't have to worry about legalization. I don't want, I don't want it's synthetics to be, it's not the same. It's not as good. It's weird. And we don't know what the fuck it does. How about that? All these right. other chemicals on this list, if you, if you care about your safety, have been way more researched than this Delta 8 bullshit. Right. Every cannabinoid that's in the cannabis plant, we don't know if they're safe. To be honest, right. a lot of them are found in such small concentrations or only in certain strains, they're not even present at concentrations worthy of being considered for safety right. or efficacy. But when you concentrate them down and you mm -hmm. and you administer them at levels that that aren't found in nature, sorry, mm -hmm. not try to be a hippie, like then it becomes something else. And I don't know what it becomes. It might not, it might be innocuous, right? It might be right. lavender oil, right, in your room if you're not allergic. It's innocuous. Mm. I mean, it's not going to make anything better, but it's not going to make anything worse, right? Or it might yeah. be turning coca leaves, which are bad for your teeth, and that's about it, mm. into cocaine. You feel me? Like so. Like, I mean, I, that's all I'm. I, that's all I'm saying. I I just coming from Indiana where like there's like a couple a handful of dispensaries make that are Delta eight making a hit just hand over fist money. Um, and there are people who are stuck there. I would have two notes to that one. It must have some kind of effect because people keep using it. And I think to a point the where you could call Delta eight and your fucking like the, the high CBD strains and shit are the earlier in your like tolerance journey that you find them the more effect they're going to have for you, the more like pleasant effect. I still would recommend one of these, these strains over some Delta eight shit. And the other thing I would say is, you know, it's easy for us from States that have very liberal policies, at least whenever you have a card and stuff in my case, like that's all some people can get. And it sucks. Right. Ultimately it sucks. Like, do you want to have the medicinal effect? Okay, cool. Well here, risk your health a little bit more. It's fucked up. It is. And then, and then the, and then, so what did we talk about? CBG, CBN, THC, CBD, Delta eight, but, but Delta eight, which I didn't want to talk about, but you tricked oh. me. Let's talk yeah. about THCV. Yeah. Okay? That's my shit. So THCV, as far as I know, it doesn't have like a super intense, um, so, uh, like, well, how am I going to phrase this? As far as I know, it doesn't seem to get us very high. 
but it 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 has some effects that are poorly understood. The one that I grab the reason that I think I gravitate towards THCV heavy strains, which are kind of specific. There's research that shows that THCV is very good for um, people who suffer from brain damage and people who have PTSD. Oh, now correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, THCV is commonly found in a, a specific set of sativas, correct? Like mm-hmm. I think I seem I remember like XJ13 tends to run yep. in THCV. Yep. Yep. Uh, something else I've noticed, and I'm not sure if this is due to the terp mix or whatever, but typically, any time that I've smoked a strain that's like got high levels of THCV, it's had that real peppery, ashy taste. But yeah. I'm not sure if that's maybe that's your experience. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I most of a uh, most of what I get it in is edibles when I get them. Okay. Um. But yeah, I um. I I just whenever I see it on a strain, if I see it, because you know the, a lot of the places in Oregon they won't they won't have like the terps listed sometimes but they will have like cbd levels thc level is mandatory and then sometimes if they're really fancy they'll have two other lines which will be like either cbn or cbg written either way right and they're slightly different but they're kind of it's weird anyway let's not get into that but um (laughs) and then and then and then there'll be thcva or thc or whatever secondary thc is in that strain and it'll have a percentage gotcha and and if i see thcv at any percentage on that strain i'll buy it but i don't i don't cultivate anything that's known to have it right now because other than that it a lot of times like you said it's in some sativas and but i do find that the sativas it's in i tend to be able to enjoy more you might, if you remember this, the next time you try one that has a notable amount of that, see if it does have that peppery taste. I would be interested okay. to hear that, if yeah, you don't mind, just it. for show research purposes. I haven't um, seen XJ13 in years, man. Out of the it was big down here for a minute. There's a place called Heartland Farms that grows it, and it's pretty good. Is there anything else on the list here that... that... Uh, most of these stuff I would consider like uh, lesser cannabinoids, and I don't mm. understand them as well. And they're not oh. found in higher concentrations, so I usually don't talk about them. I if you want, it. if you want, if you guys want a complete breakdown of terpenes and how, what they do and how they're not terpenes, cannabinoids, how they're produced and how they're derived chemically, right? So how the acids in the cannabis plants are are decarboxylates it, into these terpenes. You can go to Leafly.com and they have an article with the eight major terpenes and how they're all mm-hmm. derived and and. And then if you want, you can click on the names and it'll take you into a breakdown of every of uh, of each terpene that's over two pages long on the Internet. If you want to know yeah. this stuff in detail, please, there are plenty of resources out there. But I you don't want to listen to me talk about it for eight hours and I don't want to talk about it for eight hours. I went through uh, much like did dig very helpfully did with the cannabinoids and went through and made a list uh, of terps i tried to stay away from the t- common ones because we talked about common ones only if they had something new did i really mention them i might have brought one up that doesn't suit that but the rest of them i wanted to bring something a little bit new to the the terp discussion here uh, keeping that said i am going to start with a common one one you see as a top terp and one that you see i've noticed in the top three a lot like i would say fully 75 percent of the strains i smoke have this caryophylline caryophylline oh, yeah. however you say that shit yeah one that tastes like cracked pepper i believe it contributes to that ashtray taste that i talked about sometime and i bring this up specifically for a few reasons one this one along with linalool and uh if i get going on too long you have anything to add to, please feel free to interject um it's it's the classic anti-inflammatory terpene um that says on top of that people with crohn's and bowel disorders it's a bowel anti-inflammatory which i thought was very interesting as somebody with stomach problems uh i thought that might be worth knowing the other more interesting thing to me Um, It is known apparently to reduce alcohol intake. And this is really interesting to me. This show talks a lot about uh, recovery from addiction to alcohol and drugs. Hello, I am am Uncle Dig and I am a former uh, raging alcoholic. Um, And I have something to say about this. All of the peppery strains, the peppery indicas, I think Mm -hmm. that's probably one of the reasons I gravitate towards Jaeger, for example. (laughs) <laughs> and some of those peppery indicas is because they don't quite tickle the same thing, but 
they help. They I do. I would say anecdotally that does help you not drink. So uh, specifically, um, that more downer indica associated high right. can help you avoid the demon at the bottom of that bottle. And it it could be if I need to look deeper into this, and I'll try to come back to the next show with this too. There are definitely specific substances that can negate the cravings for other specific substances um i feel strongly that me and probably a lot of people in my lineage have either a cannabinoid imbalance or something analogous to that that whenever you smoke weed you start feeling normal um and i feel like it could be with caryophylline the same thing i think you could get the double whammy of okay i'm getting stoned now and i don't feel the need to get high and if what this is saying is true it could also literally be taking away those cravings that you feel in your gaba receptors or whatever um i say this because Dagan, i don't mean to jump on you i i've had experiences specifically with psilocybin before where mm -hmm. i have been tripping without a pack of cigarettes no problem. And then the next day oh. I fucking hung around and I didn't smoke. And then I went and bought a pack at like three in the afternoon and it wasn't a big deal. And whenever I'm microdosing, like I said in last episode, it's easier for me not to smoke cigarettes. It negates that in wow. a way that, it, yeah. See, I'm the opposite. I, nothing I love more. Like, see, when I do psychedelics, uh, than to smoke oh, tobacco yeah. or joints just I need I I almost like it almost like it wakes the beast in me. I I generally go for for cannabis, um, right. which is fine. Uh, one thing I'll say about psychedelics is sometimes they can kind of negate the effects of cannabis. But yeah, I uh, I generally say that it has the opposite effect on me, and that's why I would say everyone take what we say with a grain of salt. You have yeah. a unique you have a unique body that is yours. One of the things about all these chemicals interacting in this plant all at the same time is that the effect is different for different people. Everybody. Me and Evan are what I would like to call um except like we use cannabis is exceptionally good for us. So for right. us it is kind of a panacea. For you it might only work for one of your conditions and maybe you right. should wait until the evening to smoke cannabis. That's, That's for right. you to decide. Maybe, maybe you can't function on it. Maybe you can't, maybe you can't do your chores. Maybe you can't. And that's fine. Just have a little bit at night before you go to bed or, or, or don't enjoy cannabis at all. If it doesn't agree with you, I've known people um, who it doesn't agree with. Right. And, and that's fine. Um, but if, if, if you can enjoy it and you do enjoy it, you should, then you, it, it's mm -hmm. awesome if it, if it's good for you, but it's not for everybody. And, and some of these things that we'll say about your, your experience may vary. And that's why right. I bring this up. I want to smoke like a freight train when I do mm -hmm. powerful psychedelics, whether right. it's specifically psilocybin mushrooms, which I haven't done in a while. Um, or, uh, or, or acid or anything. All I want to do is constantly smoke and also dance. So I'm probably the most annoying person on the planet to do psychedelics with, because I want to listen to music, dance. I want to sweat a lot and I want to talk about our emotions and I want to go, like, I don't want to have a static relaxing time. Ooh. Moving, I get that. Uh, moving back to the terp list here. That was interesting by Carrie Alphaline. I've got one called terpenaline. And this is one I brought up because it, it is one that I've seen a bunch before, but looking into the research and shit, it, uh, I'm dancing now, I got a pee. I might have to pause in a minute. Um, it, lost my train of thought. It shows up a lot in the terp list. It's going to be in a lot of the weeds you smoke, but it's probably going to be low on the list. Usually whenever I'm dialing in on a terp file profile, I focus on the top three, maybe the top two, if the third one's really low. And this one, you're probably not going to see it much. 
on the top of that list. That said, the research that I say says it doesn't smell like one thing. It's kind of generically citrusy, but it's more, it smells like a lot of different ones. Some people say it smells like wood um, and so on. And it's also known as an antibacterial. And this is what I wanted to provide a segue into. Dig, I forgot if I talked to you about this privately or if it was on the show, but I've got issues with my teeth, of course, from meth, and I'm working on getting money to get them fixed and stuff. And, uh, you know, I've been dealing with this for a while, and I feel like my experience with infections, well, it has been annoying should be a lot worse than it has been okay i've also noticed that since moving to oklahoma and granted since moving to oklahoma i've also stopped doing speed and you know regained a healthier lifestyle and put some balance in my life but i've, I've also seen you that, hike on instagram dude yeah exactly like i'm actually <laughs> trying to be a human instead of just acquiring speed with my little space heater and like but i've noticed a far less common incidence of infection. And now I I don't want to make weed a panacea at all. I don't want to be some pseudoscience peddler, but you keep reading that weed is a a broad spectrum antibiotic. And it just makes me wonder, especially with my preferred method of administration, which is of course edibles, maybe weeds holding off shit that would otherwise have me in a really bad spot. Um, yeah, you know, I think that, 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 that that could be the case. Um, I know that it seems to have the ability to help some people extend their life. Right. Um, I, and I think um, the way it does that could be as simple as making it less stressful, right? Um, yeah, stress kills. Right. Um, and I'm not, I, I, you know, there are other things it's doing too, right? They say that cannabis can slow the growth of tumors. Um, okay. It has... It has certain um, neuroregenerative effects. Sorry, that's a hard right. word for me to say right now. Neuroregenerative. Neuroregenerative. Okay. Neuroregenerative effects. Neuroregenerative. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Um, now, you've got me wondering, is it neurogenerative or neuroregenerative? Anyway. It's, uh, anyway, I think it's neuroregenerative. I think you're correct. Anyway, <laughs> it helps your brain repair itself. Um, and it helped, and I think this, I think it has something to do with the myelin coating in your nerves and the way it does that, but don't quote me on that. So it helps older people, um, retain their memories a little bit longer. Um, if your brain gets old enough one day, you will have dementia. Just usually other stuff kills us first sometimes. So that is. Cannabis, it's believed in some research shows, can delay that for people. Which is awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. And that may also, in my total, as you said, Dig, non-doctor, non, non-anything, but like fucking SME, low-level fucking D-list SME opinion, maybe that's also the link to things that this stuff you said about myelin is the link to uh, cannabis helping with Parkinson's and other disorders that cause, you know, motor function issues and stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting you bring that up because of that. Yeah, yeah. I don't understand that system as well as maybe I should talk about it. But as I understand it, I'm just – myelin is the is the stuff around your nerve endings. And beyond that, I'm not going to get into it. I shouldn't – I'm not a doctor. I'm not a researcher. I took a biology class in college. Let's move on. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember mine. So, yes, that's fair. Moving on to limonene. And this is one we've covered a million times. We won't spend any time on this except to say it is the classic mood up with Terp. If you get a strain with citrus in the name, it's probably got limonene as the top and probably double over the second one. A lot of people love limonene strains. I personally, they don't seem to hit me as hard, probably because of my tolerance. And basically, other than that, Dig, unless you have anything to add, you know what limonene does. We've been yeah, over this. Yeah, limonene. Gr- great Terp. Not my favorite unless I'm... I don't know. Like like Evan said, they don't always hit me um, as 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 much as I like. Anyway, moving on. I will say now now that you do say that. Before we move on to the next one, uh, the the very good growth strains I smoked featured it not prominently as the top one, but it was often the second and third. And I really did like those strains. So maybe there's okay, the magic. Maybe it's better as a supporting actor. Maybe this is a character actor terp. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, trying to be in that main role and failing, you know. Um, now let's move on to linalool. Linalool we've spent some time talking about too, but I feel like it's a little more interesting simply because I would say it is the indica version, quote unquote, of limonene. It's in everything or it was in everything for a while. Back like two years ago, whenever fucking you couldn't, you know, take two steps without tripping over GDP. Everybody's smoking uh, GDP. 
I that miss shit that. is super I wish heavy. Pe- I wish people would still smoke GDP. Where did Granddaddy Purple go? It went into fucking cherry pie, which is probably one of the best fucking slash all time uh, cultivar mixes I've ever heard of. Mm, fucking love perfect. that shit. Sorry. And then, uh, yeah, so uh, I like uh, linalool. I like, there's actually a strain um, of cannabis called lavender that was popular here for a while. Mm It's an indica leaner that's very nice. And then she she smelled, you know, like a linalool. It smelled like, you know, like straight lavender. So, like a fabric softener. Yes, but yes, it was nice. I liked it. Um, I will say that. if you're not used to it, some of these strains can hit the back of your throat a little bit weird. Um, mm-hmm. But it's it's something that I think you'll find pleasant, almost like if you like a menthol cigarette. Would you agree with me a bit? Um, I, I've got another one that I think might be a little more closely linked to menthol. I think like for camphor. me, it's... Yeah, camphor is actually the exact one. Um, but I think for me, it's more like that fabric softener taste and smell. Okay. I do enjoy a GDP. This is another one personally that I could give or take. I probably would prefer it as a secondary. Um, okay. But, you know, we all know people who love GDPs. Like my good friend Spunky, he loves GDPs. I love that shit too, dude. Yeah. And, and you know, my partner, um, she loves lavender, that strain. Every time we find it, we get it. Good shit. And that 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 is, I'm I should have brought up more strains than it's in. Of course, the the, the the typical one though is of course GDP. So if you're into trying that, check out GDP. Uh, the other thing I'll note is this one more than any. Now, if you go onto Leafly, like Dig said, there's a ton of good info. But these sites, not just Leafly, all of them tend to have the problem of saying, oh, it causes mood uplift and it is a painkiller. And all of them will say that it's an anti-inflammatory. But when you look a little deeper, this is one that really people seem to report a mix of the two, which I think is another reason people who are coming away from like drug abuse and shit might seem to enjoy it because it's going to help you with the physical pains. If you're not drinking as much, not taking pain pills as much, you don't have that numbing feeling helping your shoulder and your foot or whatever. And you also, it's uplifting your mood. So maybe weed is a panacea in this context. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Your mileage may vary. Smoke a bowl, call me in the morning, or don't. I'm going to. Yeah, you are. All right, so let's talk about camphor. Camphor, 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 camphor. I don't recall having this one. I found it on a website. Said Evan's notes. I think <laughs> I've had uh, I've had this before. Um, isn't this the, this is the minty one, right? Yes, this has got the menthol taste. It's it's it. This is in some of the Girl Scout cookie strains, not all of them. Okay, but if it's the minty one, I think there's another minty one too. But um, this is in some of the minty strains, not in high. It doesn't need to be in very high concentration it's for okay. it to have an effect on flavor, as I remember. Right? It's one of those big bangs for a buck terps. I don't think you need a lot of it. So even okay. if it's not at the top of your list, that doesn't mean that the strain might not be very mint Ford. Okay. So keep that in mind. It also said that this is one, and you always wonder about shit like this when you read it online, but this actually makes sense. It says that this one is good for topicals. You can think what you want about weed topicals. I personally don't buy into it, but I don't want to discredit anybody who's had a good experience with it. Well, um, camph- camphor is not just a terpene found in weed. Camphor is like right. a long running medicinal thing. And that's, it's probably in vapor rub and shit, I would assume. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, that would make sense then. And that, that makes me wonder two things, I guess. One would, I guess, I wouldn't necessarily get a weed thing because it has camphor and rub it into my skin. I would just get a vapor rub or a fucking weed base. Right. And again, exactly. I'm not a doctor. Now, okay. the other thing is, though, and I, I'm sorry, I'm well, this. This I is, will oh, say that a lot of those those the other products have camphor suspended in a petroleum base. So okay. if you wanted to avoid petroleum products, if you were like a real, real hardcore hippie who was not putting like petroleum products on their skin, I, right. I see I see you, Dreddy Mama. You can get it from <laughs> weed. Respect. That's and all I'm to saying. To be hundred percent clear, like I am totally not trying to discredit anybody else's experience with cannabis topicals. Like it just it didn't work for me. That's all, and it makes me suspect them because of it. Now I, I do wonder, and this is it helps I've... with my pain specifically around my scar tissue that I have. Okay, well that's an awesome uh, alternate viewpoint. It makes me wonder, and that this is really going deep into the birth science. Could it be that camphor possibly helps carry other things in? Uh-huh. Does it work as an agent like that? Just a question for the audience. 
<laughs> okay. Here's another one. Now, I did try to keep this list of ones that were kind of uncommon and things that did something novel, which I said at the beginning. We have something called philandering. I do recall seeing this and going, oh, philandering, but not really paying attention to what it did. It drew my eye for a few reasons. One, Leafly, Leafly plays heavily into the research in this episode. Leafly calls it mysterious and says, I forget if it said it was actually used as a medication today or if it's historically been, but it is used as a medicine on its own. It's supposedly an anti-cancer terpene, and it's also found in eucalyptus. Um, and that's really all I have to say to it, except to say I would be interested in trying this just because it's fucking mysterious and I want to know what it tastes like. I want to know if it tastes like medicines I've tried. Okay. Yeah, I don't know much about this one at all. No. So, mystery terp. It's an antibacterial again. Dig, would you like to take the last one? Yeah, valencine. It's, I don't know what it is. I've only heard of it in passing. It's apparently found in Valencia oranges. Um, it's apparently a neuroprotectant, which is um, kind of like something. It's kind of the same thing as like something that it, in, improves neuro regenerate it's the same kind of thing same kind of thing right. we were talking what were we talking about that it was like neuro that regeneration and mm -hmm. uh one of the weed up it was like the second term we talked about but I right terpinoline is supposed to be a neuro assisted neuro regeneration or whatever right same kind of thing it's supposed to increase neuroplasticity which is thought to protect the brain from long-term damage from stuff that may be happening to it right um so that's basically what a neuroprotectant is. Um, apparently, valencine can be used as an insecticide. Um, if, if, if it's the one that smells um, like oranges, um, like it mentions Valencia oranges, um, you'll find it in a lot of really citrusy strains as well. Um, I, uh, I'm not super familiar with this one, though. No. I hadn't even heard the name, actually. I said at the beginning I had, but I'm thinking back, and I'm thinking I'm thinking of terpinoline. I don't think I've ever heard of it. I will definitely keep an eye out for it now. This show kind of also... makes me low-key want to test some of my cannabis. Dude, you should. That would be an awesome show. Well, that would be for the bag seed. You do a bag seed. And then we would pump it's it on so you. expensive. Find a good cheap lab that'll give you fucking whatever results that just has you write in what you want. I don't want that. I want to know, damn it. If I'm spending the money, I just want them to tell me what's in it. I don't want it to 30%. I'm like, bro, this is CBD. It's not 30%. Tell me what it is. That's because you're not influenced by the taint of capitalism, of course. Well, I'm smoking it. I look, if it's 12%, it's 12%. I've been happy with what I've been smoking. I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't. Bro, there's like, let's so let's talk about the entourage effect. The reason we're talking about all this stuff is because the way that this is what contributes to that multi-layered high you get when right. you consume cannabis. And that's why it affects everyone differently. THC may affect me and Evan the same, right? But if we do a big rip of the same strain, one of us may go, eh, because one of us doesn't like the taste of camphor or whatever. And the mm -hmm. other one might be like, oh, my God, that was the best ball rip I've ever had in my life. Just based on the right. taste. Right. And so that's and that's the start of your experience. If you have to choke it down to get high, that's affecting your neurochemistry too. Going past taste. You're going in, it's going into your you're breathing it in, it's passing your blood bane barrier. Not just the cannabinoids, but some of these terpenes are psychoactive mildly too. But they're adding a little spice to the sauce. And so and then if you if you want to get really hippy dippy, we could talk about what do they call it? The smell uh when you the nose, nose. you bet you burn essential oils and it like oh, it's I a treatment or that. something. It's like when you yeah. smell stuff, it's supposed to be that. good for you. Oh whatever. aroma aromatherapy. Yeah. Okay. If you believe in aromatherapy, which for the record, I don't, but hey, people do. Um if it helps you feel a, better and yeah. And so it, there's there's that aspect of it too. Right. And so all of this stuff combines and forms an effect and it affects everyone differently. And every plant is slightly different. And that's what right. makes cannabis so special, but also frustrating for people who are new to it, who want a replicable experience. Because right. every time I hit this bong, I might be having a slightly different experience. That's fine for me. But for a lot of people, that's that's not what they want. 
in their medicine. And I understand that. Oh. And, and, and that's can be a frustrating thing about cannabis, but also a beautiful thing is that it's a little unpredictable. Get you some tolerance built up. The more that you learn to differentiate, like, and you will like at first, all the highs feel the same. And you could probably get baked up the first couple times you smoke weed ever probably get baked up like a straight CBD strain. But like, as you get that tolerance built up, you then this entourage effect becomes more important because you do want to dial in, especially if you're using for medical purposes. Not everybody is. Some people do just want to get zooted on Friday night and fucking play Skyrim and cool. Like maybe over time you'll need more than that. But like for medical users, yeah. Absolutely. On, on the topic of medicine, we should bring this back around and we might use this as an in cap or I might edit it in later. I am personally, and this is just based on my experience, all through the 90s, all these cancer fighting things were spots to have come out. And then the 2000s and so on, there's always something new that's supposed to stop cancer coming out. On those grounds alone, I have always been very dubious of the claims that cannabis helps fight cancer. I'm not a researcher though. Like I'm just some fucking asshole. So if there are researchers saying that maybe there's some sauce to it, like you said, some magic. Uh, Dig, I know that you had talked about and you left notes here on it, making growing RSO, I almost said making RSO for somebody. And I was curious if you had any insight into that thought. So here's, here's my thought. Um, If one of your, like, so here, here was the situation, um, it, and it's I think it's I think it's been a few years now. So I think it's past whatever trouble I can get into. I don't do this shit anymore. Like I've said on the on right. the bag seed pot chronicles and this caught podcast as well. There's no need to make RSO in your backyard anymore. No. If you can make twenty dollars, you can buy a thing of RSO. It used to be so expensive. It used to be so much more expensive than it is now. Please just find a way to buy it. It's not $100 a syringe and now. It's not going to cost you $600 to treat your friends with cancer. You don't need to make it in your backyard. It's not safe. I've blown up Pyrex. Anyway, um, <laughs> that being said, I believe <laughs> that Rick Simpson oil can help people who are fighting with cancer. If it okay. do- now, now, there are some evidence that suggests that THC can slow the growth of cancer. Same thing with CBD. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, but what it definitely can do is it can help people get restorative sleep and it can give them their appetite back, which if they have a full stomach, they have a full stomach to help fight their cancer. A lot of the okay. second, a lot of their sec these people expire because they they their bodies crap out before they're done with their chemo because they can't eat. They you can't, can't eat. you know what I mean? Right. So, no, dude, that's but if I pump insightful. them full of fucking like really stereotypical indica, like mm. like knock them out, and then they're gonna wake up. GDP, rat. yes. Make it out of Granddaddy Purple. Make it out of Afghan <laughs> Kush, and then give it to your cancer friend. And even and listen, do not stop them from getting cancer treatment. This right. is in addition to your yes, friend, your friend gets the chemo. Okay, that's step one. Step two is knocking her in the brain with cannabis or so she can sleep. It doesn't hurt as much. And then when she wakes up, you take your friend to to, to Luby's or uh, Denny's or um, your favorite buffet, or I don't, right. maybe not, or like a pizza place or like, you right. know, and just, just, just keep feeding them oil. And then they'll pass out in the car on the way home with like two pizzas in them. Mm-hmm. And you just bought them two weeks because all that pizza is going to get turned into whatever they need to fight cancer. Calories. And, Yes. Mini calories. That's awesome. Those- and that's really, that, I was just underscoring your point. I never really thought about it like that, but from that perspective, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. it's There's more to medicine than like, oh, it comes and it rips the cancer cell out and eats it. Like you also need to fuel that process. There are other things that come along with chemo, like pain, you know, joint degeneration. I mean, the shit fucks you up. And cannabis right. can really, you know, help with the pain and the appetite suppressant and and honestly, outlook. I know that Mood people uplift. I know I know that Evan's always like, stop telling me to think positive. But <laughs> if you think positive, it can it can it can be good for you and everyone around you, and it can reduce your stress levels. And cannabis can help us think positively about the situations that we find ourselves in. All, all I'm saying is that telling me I shouldn't worry because 
I could have this situation and my foot could be chopped off doesn't help me. So don't say that to me because I will respond very negatively to that. Otherwise, no. please, I'm trying to think positive. No, but yeah, I know. I know. I'm just teasing you. I know, but I'm just teasing back. We're good. Uh, no, but note, yeah. Think positively. Please. I need to find another Dr. Pepper. Right? Is that what's happening? I'm sorry. I cut you off. No, you're, that's, that's it. You're good. Dr. Pepper now. <laughs> Thank you.